So we are now up to two of the Maxwell's equations. We have Ampere's law done, and we have Gauss's law. And we will very quickly knock out a third one. The third one is Gauss's law for magnetism. This is perhaps the most interesting one. And to understand it, I have to tell you the story of Blas Cabrera. So in the early 80s, Blas Cabrera was a professor, Stanford University, experimental physicist. And around that time, the superconducting materials were coming out. You could get superconducting wire. You could cool it down. And basically, you could make a ring of the superconducting wire that was extremely sensitive to detect any chargey electromagnetic thing that might go through it. So he wanted to detect magnetic monopoles. So the question is, if there's charge for the electric field, why is there not charge for the magnetic field? A lot of theories would predict there's no reason there shouldn't be. But it seems like with the magnetic field, with everything that we observe, we're limited to just little loops. We think a current loop makes a magnetic field. It always has a north pole. It always has a south pole. Even though it's hard to envision, fundamentally, there should just be just a north pole, a monopole, one pole, the equivalent of a charge. <clears throat> so the idea was maybe they're just hard to detect. Maybe there aren't many of them. So with these new superconducting materials, they could make detectors that might see them. So Cabrera was very ambitious. He said, I'm going to do this. He sets it up, cools it down, sets up all the electronics, a very sophisticated experiment, and turns it on and just lets it go. And then on February 14th, 1981, he gets a perfect signature of a magnetic monopole going through the device, exactly what the signature uh, the data should look like. It was officially the happiest a physicist has ever been on Valentine's Day, history of science. Okay? So he's very excited. The whole lab is excited, and they watch to get another one, because then they get an idea of how many monopoles are there. We see one a day, one a week, what do you see? So they watched, and they watched, and they watched, and they watched, and they never saw another magnetic monopole. They wrote it up. It's in peer, uh, physical review letters, and it's very clear in the abstract. We have seen one in 150 days. We saw one. Hundreds of other physicists set up their own magnetic monopole detectors because three people can get the Nobel Prize, right? So Cabrera and now, who finds the next two? And uh, no one to this day has ever found a magnetic monopole. So there may not be any. I like to think there's one, and it happened to fly through Stanford February 14th, 1981. I don't know. But the way we can tie that to a Maxwell's equation is Gauss's law for the electric field was just Gauss's law. And what did it tell you? It told you that if you have a charge, a magnetic or an electric charge inside a surface, a closed surface, that you would always get some flux, right? Because that charge is making an E field. So you would get a net E field coming out. Gauss's law for magnetism basically says that if you take any closed surface, we're doing a surface now, not Ampere's law, of B dot DA, you will never get a flux. It will never happen. If the universe were symmetric, you would say it's the magnetic charge over something, probably the permeability of free space or something. But the fact is, there are no magnetic charges. There are no magnetic, magnetic monopoles. It's equal to zero. And this actually fits what we understand about the magnetic field. The way we draw it is that it's this field lines kind of going like this. And the field lines are always loopy. right? They always start and end on themselves. You never see a magnetic field line just coming off of an object. It's always looping around some other current loop. Therefore, any uh, closed surface that you draw always has field lines going in, and it always has field lines going out. And there's no way to ever get a net magnetic field flux through a closed surface. The reason is because this side is zero. So sometimes it's usually referred to as Gauss's law for magnetism. It's really just the unnamed Maxwell's equation. Gauss's law for magnetism is a good name. I say, I say, forget it. Let's call it Cabrera's law, because he saw one. Maybe there's one. It's actually interesting. There are many physicists who search for things that don't exist. It's a weird phenomenon. Magnetic monopoles probably don't exist. Why would you look for it? One reason, maybe you'll find it. Maybe you'll be the one person to find it, and you'll be famous. But it actually serves an important purpose, is because when he searched for 150 days and saw one, if they exist, he put an upper limit on how many there are in the universe. And then, when many other people searched for many years with bigger and bigger loops, they never saw one either. And they were lowering the upper limit of magnetic monopole density in the universe. 
And then other physicists, theorists, are writing cosmological theories about inflation and the Big Bang and all that stuff and how the universe works. Those will predict that, oh, there might be monopoles. And they'll predict a certain density. And if they predict a density that's higher than what we measured, that there aren't any, then that theory is wrong. And they have to go work on it. And they have to work on that theory some more and improve it to get their magnetic monopole density down to below the observed upper limit. So looking for things that don't exist actually serves an important purpose uh, in science, even if you never find it. <laughs>